Hey y'all, my name is Brent Baxter and I am a pro songwriter. I've been in Nashville over a decade now and I've been blessed to have a top five single with Alan Jackson, a song called Monday Morning Church. And I've also had cuts by Randy Travis, Lady Annabellum, Ray Stevens, Lone Star. And I want to talk to you about today are three techniques that I use to kind of dig into a title or concept and really figure out what it's really talking about, what the heart of the matter is. So the first technique I want to talk to you about is letting your title write your song. Now this is a technique that I used with Monday Morning Church, which was recorded by Alan Jackson. And it's on iTunes if you want to, if you want to go get it. But I actually found that, that title and that concept of Empty as a Monday Morning Church in a poem that my mom wrote. And I was looking through there and she was talking about a teacher's day. And she said, I walk out at 4.30 and the parking lot's as empty as a Monday Morning Church. I thought, okay, that's great. I love that phrase of Empty as a Monday Morning Church. But I didn't really want to write about a teacher's day. So... I had to think, okay, what is in that, that title of Monday Morning Church that it, there's something compelling, but what is it that I can turn into a song? So let's look at each of those words. Well, the first word we look at is the word empty. What does that bring to mind? It brings to mind a, a sadness, a loneliness, a hurting. There's an ache to empty. It's usually not a positive thing. And what about the word church? What does that bring to mind? It's, there's a, a heaviness to church. You know, it's God, it's spirit, it's heaven, it's the really big issues in life. And ultimately that's what brought me to the feeling of, well, there's an aching and there's an emptiness and there's a sadness. Somebody died. The next technique I want to talk to you about is called diving. And it's, it's free riding, it's brainstorming, it's that sort of thing. We're basically, um, I've carried around this notebook for a long time. And I'll just fill up a page with a subject. And it could be a place, an idea, a thing, whatever it is. And I did one for rings. I just thought the concept of rings was interesting. And so I was actually sitting in a coffee shop and filled out a page on this. And uh, you can take a look at it. And so I pulled out some things I thought were interesting. I thought the idea of the ring of condensation on a bar was interesting. I thought the idea of the wedding ring tied into that. And so I started pulling these different concepts together and putting them into a story and, and started figuring out a way that there was a thread that ran through this that made a compelling story. And the song ended up becoming a song of mine called Ring on the Bar. And Ring on the Bar was recorded by an artist named James Dupre uh, independently but it got picked up by Warner Brothers Records and so it's available on iTunes as well and James and I are currently writing for his debut record on Warner Brothers so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, it opens some doors and we'll get some more cuts out of it. The third concept I want to talk to you about is called mapping and I had the opportunity a while back to write with a Canadian country star named Gord Bamford and his producer who's also a co-writing buddy of mine named Byron Hill and Byron has a bunch of number one series credits so I was really happy to be in that room. And so one of the first things I did was, one, I did my homework on Gord. I got copies of everything he's recorded and I talked to Byron about the direction for the next record. And so I got a sense of what he talks about, what he likes to sing about, what his persona is, his brand. And so I took that and I went down my list of potential titles and ideas and started thinking about them through the lens of what would Gord Bamford want to record and what does he want to put on the radio? What does he want to say to his audience? And I came across an idea of mine called On My Best Days. And I thought, well, let's dive into that. This seems like something positive that can go with some tempo and might be good for Gord and his audience. And so I did something called mapping, where I started breaking out each section of the song and saying, okay, what does this lead to? What does that lead to? How do these fit together? Before I really started diving in trying to write a lyric. I was really fleshing out the idea. All right, so we're starting out with the title, On My Best Days. So what do we do with that? Well, you want to put your main idea in the most prominent position. So that main idea is going in our course. So I knew that early on. What do I put around it? Well, there are a couple of things you could play off of. One is the day, best days, days versus nights. And what I decided to go off of was best. Best versus worst. 
best versus good, whatever the kind of flip side of that is to draw that contrast, is going to be what I put in my verses. Now I decided to go with good because I thought for a positive love song, contrasting a good day with my best days makes it the whole thing even more positive instead of saying that, yeah, you know, my worst days are blah, 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 but my best days are with you. It seemed like it was even more positive. You can stay more positive throughout going, yeah, these days are good, but man, the days with you, those are, those are the best ones. So the next question is, what are my good days? Well, there are a lot of things good days could be. I decided to go with work days and play days. So those being the main two types of good days that I'm going to work with. All right, so now it's time to map my song out. I decided to go in kind of uh, ascending order, meaning I'm going to go from my good, good days to my better good days. So I decided to start off with work days, as in good work days, successful days when I'm just killing it at work and I'm doing a great job and, and I'm the man. That's a good day. And then we're going to contrast that in the course with, yeah, those are good, but my best days are with you. And then we're raising the bar a little bit on good days because, you know, they say a good day of fishing beats a good day at work. Or even a bad day of fishing beats a good day at work. Well, this is going to be a good day of fishing or golfing, whatever that is. We're going to contrast that. So it's like, yeah, that even beats a good work day. But still, my best days are with you, sweetie pie, honey bunch. I was blessed that uh, this song on my best days was actually recorded by Gord Bamford. And it's on his album, Is It Friday Yet? which is on iTunes Canada, and it just got nominated for Album of the Year for the Canadian Country Music Award. So, happy about that, and uh, keep my fingers crossed. All right, so those are three techniques that I use to find my way into a song idea. Give them a try, see if they work for you. Also, you can check out more of my stuff and more of my story at brentbaxtermusic.com and at manversusrow.com, where I do some blogging about what I've learned in the music business. So, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. God bless and keep on writing.